All right, in this video, we are going to get into the basics of creating a new class, and we'll also talk about how to instantiate a class. Um, I will note that this uh, creating part right here is only the very, very basics of creating a class. Over the next two videos, we'll get into how to actually fully flesh out the class with all the attributes and behaviors that we need. But we're just going to focus on how to create the class in the first place and get us to the point where we're ready to start putting those attributes and behaviors in. So creating instantiating, that is the uh, idea of what we're doing for this video. We're covering 10.2 and 10.3 in the focus part of the textbook. All right, so we've used a lot of predefined classes so far. I talked about some of them in the previous video. Uh, but what we're able to do is define our own classes and then create instances of those classes, which can be really helpful for some applications. There's some types of problems where it's just really helpful for us to think about the problem as objects interacting with each other, rather than trying to think about it more straightforwardly, like doing a whole bunch of math and being done with it. For example, um, if you have a library database, it might be really helpful for you to think about this library being a collection of books, and then your search functions might be searching through those book objects to look for pieces of information in their properties, like um, metadata tags, or the author name, or the um, title, or the do we decimal classification or things like that. Um, and you can also have code that sorts the books based on some of those properties, like sorts them by author or sorts them by do a decimal classification and then author or things like that. So um, that could be one example where thinking about book objects can be really helpful rather than trying to sort, let's say, a whole bunch of information contained in tons of parallel arrays or something like that. Another example might be this sort of framework that I started setting up here, where we have course teacher, student, and assignment classes. Um, this could be a sort of planning um, system for the college, where they are trying to see what students are in what classes, what teachers are teaching what classes, how many classes every teacher has, uh, the course load for every student and the course, the teaching load for every teacher, you know, sort of all these administrative things might really benefit from having this object oriented uh, type of view where a teacher has a list of courses, a teacher has a name, a student has a list of courses that they're taking, a student has a name, a teacher has an employee ID, a student has a student ID all that kind of thing. And all of these courses also have all this information contained within their sort of course object. So that can be another really useful uh, paradigm to think about problems like this in. If you're trying to find out um, how many students in courses taught by Iris Kohler have a last name starting with K, going to the list of all the teachers, finding the teacher with the name Iris Kohler, going to all of my courses, and then uh, in all of my courses, uh, searching through the students list to see what students have the name where you know their last name starts with the letter K or something like that, rather than just going through a whole bunch of tables or something like that, thinking about it in terms of objects and sort of manipulating the objects like this, especially if you want to update things like, oh, this student is has withdrawn from this class, so we need to go to this student and then go to their courses list and then remove that one course from their courses list and then also go to that course and remove the student from that student's list or something like that, you know? It could be a really useful way of thinking about it. So when you are actually creating your own class, um, you have to write a class definition which you have seen before is the definition for the form main class that you've been working in this whole time. A class definition starts with public class and then the name of the class, and then you write down all of the attributes, and then you write down all of the behaviors of that class, and then you write end class at the very end. 
Uh, and in the next two videos, we'll actually talk about what you put in the attribute section and what you put in the behavior section. But this is sort of the format of how you actually make a class in Visual Basic. Public class, class name. You write all the attributes, you write all the behaviors, and then you end the class. When you're creating a class, uh, of course, you need to name your class. And the best practice for naming a class is uh, using Pascal case. So um, having all of those words smashed together where every word begins with an uppercase letter, including the first word. This is Pascal case we're talking about, not Camel case. So if you have multiple words, uh, you smash them all together. No spaces are allowed in your class names. And you um, start all of them with an uppercase letter. Class names, class names should also be self-documenting, so they should describe what that class is actually doing. For example, teacher, student, course, assignment, all of those describe what the class actually is. Now, when you're actually defining a class, you don't just put it in the main form uh, file that you've been working in. You actually have to create a new .vb file separate from your main form file and declare your class in that separate file. So this class file will hold the entire class definition and it should only hold that class definition. So it'll be the class statement and everything contained within. You just have a new VB file completely dedicated to saying what that class does and it'll be separate from your main form file, which means that you can sort of reference it separately. You don't have to keep on scrolling between different areas of your main form file, uh, you know, scrolling to the top to look at where you're using the class and then scrolling to the bottom to actually look at the definition of the class or anything like that. You put it in a new file and it's sort of uh, partitioned off from everything happened happening in the main form. That class file, that separate file for the class, is essentially a land where only that class is being defined and you only are thinking about that class, in a sense. Now in your class file, you should include comments describing the file at the very top, sort of like how you include comments describing your um, application at the very top. Also, the comments including your name and all that kind of stuff. But you also should include the three option statements that we always include in our main form. So these three option statements need to be present at the top of every class file as well as your main form file. Uh, option explicit on, option strict on, option infer off. Those three option statements should always be at the top of your class files. So what we have here is the beginning of an application that is going to help a deck company determine uh, the cost of actually building a deck based on the length and the width of that deck. But we're going to use uh, an object to actually um, figure out how expensive this deck will be. Uh, so this whole thing is described in the focus on the concepts uh, part of the chapter here, but I'm going to go through a couple key pieces of it just to show off some things that I think are really key for this. Right now, I'm not really worrying about solving the problem. What I'm going to focus more on is uh, showing how to create a class for this application. We're going to create a rectangle class uh, that will hold information about the size of the deck and then that we will be able to use in order to um, figure out the price of the deck based on that information that the rectangle class is holding and a behavior that we will assign to the rectangle class. So that will be over the course of the next few videos, we'll be talking about that. But what we'll start off with is just creating the class definition, uh, creating the class file and getting the class definition started a little bit. So. If you want to create a class file, you go to project right here and you want to add class. Uh, this will bring up a dialogue. Uh, 
And yeah, all you have to do is hit class just like this um, for the name. We'll put the name of the class that we want to use, uh, the, the name that we want to give the class. So in this case, I'm just going to call it rectangle because all this class is is a representation of a rectangle in code. It will create these representations when we instantiate them from this class. So I'll add that. And it actually goes and adds the um, rectangle.vb file right here into your project at the same level as the main form.vb. But it also uh, starts out with giving us this class definition. Now, what I want you to do is actually, um, right when you create your class file, I want you to start out, before you even write any code, start out by adding a couple things. So we'll add some of the, some of the comments that we usually see at the beginning of our code. So name, um, under the name, I'll put the name of the file, rectangle.vb. Uh, and then the programmer, I'll put Iris Kohler on, I'm recording this on 4-11-2023. Uh, and then I'll also put a comment saying what this class actually is, uh, and a representation of a rectangle. Oh, there we go, I can spell. Uh, this may not be so necessary for a class as simple as a rectangle, but it might be really helpful if you are working on a more complicated class where it's not as uh, apparent what that class is doing, or if that class has a very specific function that you need to describe or something like that, this would be good to put up here in the comments. And then of course I'll put our option statement, so option explicit on, uh, option strict on, option infer off. Just like that, you need these three option statements at the beginning of your class file because they modify, strictly modify the file that they are contained in, not the entire program. So you need it at the top of uh, mainform.vb right here, and you also need it um, at the top of each of the class files you make. So I will be looking for that when I'm grading, that you have these three option statements at the beginning of all of these. But yeah, that is how you create a class file. You um, go to project, you add class. Uh, in that dialog, you type in the name of the class, in this case, rectangle.vb. Uh, and then you have your class definition where we are ready to start defining our behaviors and attributes at any point. Um, and we'll talk about how to fill out this re rectangle class in the next couple of videos. Now I'm going to skip ahead and pretend that we have completely created our class. You know, we've written out all of the attributes and we've written out all of the uh, methods and all that kind of stuff. So once that has been done, we are ready to instantiate our new object. Uh, there are two ways of doing it, and we have seen uh, met both of these methods put into action in various ways, or at least sort of put into action um, in various ways as we have gone through the course. Method one, uh, the first method of instantiating an object is pretty similar to how we were creating the stream reader and stream writer objects, sort of. Um, what you do is you essentially declare the variable first, and this would be at the very top of the procedure. Probably this would be very helpful if you don't have all of the information you need at the top of the procedure when you're declaring all of your variables. So you have to do some calculations first and then you know actually get your object out of there and that make more sense that might make more sense when we talk about parameters uh for initializing objects but we'll get there we'll get there in a future video so you essentially declare the variable first either dim or private variable as class name oh and this is really good for um private uh, for you know class variables in say the form main class as well because 
most of the time you're not really going to want to um, initialize those variables outside of a procedure. You normally want to initialize them inside of, a, inside of a procedure. So this is probably what you'll do if you're making a class variable. But yeah, you uh, initialize, you actually declare the variable and then somewhere later down the procedure, you say variable equals new class name. You have to use this new keyword right here because new tells Visual Basic to create a new instance of an object of this class class name. So that's really, really important. You have to say variable equals new class name. Um, so in the declaration, when you say variable as class name, you're just saying that the variable will be of type class name. You know, that's the type that the variable is going to be. That That's the type of data it will hold is this particular object of type class name. But when you're actually creating the variable, then you say it equals new class name like that. So some examples, uh, if there was some time card object we were working with, uh, we would create an hours info variable as type time card. And then we set hours info equal to new time card. So this is equal to a fresh, you know, fresh out of the oven time card object that has just been created. It's still a little bit hot from being baked by Visual Basic, I suppose. But yeah, that's how we could use this first method. The second method is what we saw with the random objects. So we would say dim or private uh, variable as new class name, just like that. So when we say as new class name, we're not just saying that the variable is of type class name, but we're also instantiating that variable with a new object of type class name. So we're telling Visual Basic to assign the type class name to the variable and then also instantiate a new object and set that into the variable. An example here would be dim hours info as new time card, which creates an object of the type time card and puts it into the variable hours info, which was given the type time card. All right, so that is our uh, brief discussion on creating and instantiating classes. We'll uh, continue on with actually filling out classes as we go, and we'll actually get some more information about how to instantiate uh, objects from classes as we learn more about how to fill out the behaviors of the classes. So if you are feeling a little bit unsure about creating and instantiating, um, I hope that the next couple of videos will help clear things up for you.